Hey everyone, Coach Jacinto here. Hey, uh, the last couple videos, well, we've talked about uh, our strength plan uh, at the beginning of the year uh, that we're actually utilizing right now as I speak, uh, where we're focusing on our, our focus is mainly glutes uh, with using a sumo deadlifts and hip thrusts. And then going into our eccentric and isometric phase. But now, this in this video, I wanna talk a little bit about uh, our our three-day strength training uh, where we really get into uh, different methods of strength strength and conditioning. So the methods that we use are like our sub-max method, max effort method, dynamic effort method, and our repeated effort method, okay? So this in this uh, program, we'll use it about a total of 11 total weeks throughout the year. Um, so let's talk about how I put those this uh, plan into action uh, and how I attach these methods to our exercise that I talked to talked about in our first video. Okay, so first thing, let's do a little review. Okay, so uh, from February, March, uh, from February 26th to March 22nd, um, we're going to utilize uh, th this uh, this type of training. Okay, so let's talk about the four uh, different methods that we utilize during this time. Like I said, this is probably a little review for some people, uh, but these are kind of, it talks about like the methods and also talks about the rep, rep schemes that we use, okay? So first is our max effort method where we really push uh, maximal load, okay? So 15% of our, of our weight is done of 85 and above here, okay? So 85% and above is our max effort method, right? So let me give you an example of a rep scheme. Five, four, three, two, one, okay? So we'll utilize this and I'll show you how I put it into our program, okay? The next method that we use is our sub-max effort method, okay? So we're, we're using sub-maximal uh, uh, load, okay? So anywhere from uh, 75 to 85%, anywhere from there uh, is our sub-max effort, okay? So now a, a big chunk of our reps are done in this, with the utilizing this method. So about 45% of our lifts are in this utilizing this method okay an example of that is your traditional five by five okay so five sets five reps at 75 to 80 percent is where we want to be uh, for this method okay the third that we the third method we use is our dynamic effort method so this is where we're really trying to push the bar as quickly as possible with speed uh, that's really our focus there. So, and not just in our power exercises, but also when we're utilizing anywhere from 50 to 75% of our 1RM, we're really focusing, we really want the bar to move as quickly as possible. So that's kind of our focus during those percentages, okay? An example of rep schemes would be a five by three, five sets by, by three reps, okay? So what we're really keeping the weight lower, um, but we're really focusing on moving the bar quickly, okay? Our fourth method that we use here is our repeated effort method. So this is kind of our hypertrophy, our bodybuilding method. We're really focusing on building muscle, all right? So uh, where we're lifting non-maximal load to failure, or at least close to failure. Okay, we're really focusing on getting that pump in our muscles. So 20% of our lifts are from 60 to 65, 75, and that's kind of the, the percentage uh, that we use there. 20% uh, are probably, is what we, you know, are the number of lifts that we use with this method, okay? Uh, for an example, here's a rep scheme. So we got anywhere from three to four sets, uh, eight to 12 reps, okay? I mean, study says you can go up to 20, but just to keep it simple for us, we're anywhere from eight to 10. So we'll go eight one week, 10 next week, and then 12 the following week. We really utilize the repeated effort method also for our progressive overload. So using the same weight for eight, for 10, and for 12, okay? That's kind of the idea there. So if you can increase your rep range by two every week using the same weight, you're getting stronger, right? So that's kind of what we do with those there, okay? So here's kind of an example of how we use it, okay? So this is our day one. And let's really focus on the top tier, so our tier one. And this kind of gives you a good idea of how 
I move our sub max, max, and how do I utilize it throughout the month, okay? So this is kind of a month program. So for the first week, uh, for our back squat, we use sub max, okay? So this is our sub max, and you can see how it kind of continues all the way down, right? For our tier two, we'll kind of use something very similar. And then week two, we move over to kind of a combination of, of the three, right? We don't use repeated method, method effort for our tier one exercise. That's kind of where we do our strength building, okay? So we're using sub max, max effort, and dynamic. And you can see that week two there, we've got a kind of combination of all three, okay? Um, week, week three is where we max out. So we go heavy, okay? We're really focusing on our five, four, three, two, one. Okay, that's kind of the rep scheme that we use there. And then week four, we use this as a dynamic effort method, but we also utilize this as our deload, okay? So our, our reps are lower, our intensity is lower, but if we're gonna do that, we might as well really focus on the dynamic. Let's move the bar quickly, right, okay? You can see here's an example of how it comes together with the rep schemes, okay? So let's say, for example, okay? So we talked about our back squat. We really talked about week one where we use sub max, our sub max method effort, okay, effort method, sorry. And then what we do is we'll go, we'll go five by five, right? So five sets, five reps, and two of those sets are at 75 and three of those sets are at 80%. So we're really focusing on sub max, a great way to build strength, but also a great way to build hypertrophy without going into the, the eight to 12 rep range, okay? So then you can see the week two, how we use the combo of them, okay? So we've got the first two sets are the di dynamic because they're 55 and 65. And then the next two sets, they're at 75 and 80. So that's our sub max. And then we'll hit our max effort, which is 85%, okay? So Kind of combination of all three there then we'll go into our week three so our week three with our back squat is when we max out okay so we'll try to hit heavy we'll really try to get our one rm we test our one rms there uh and we try to beat them okay but one thing that i tell our students one thing one of the great things that we use here is we use progressive overload so now when if they hit their hundred percent okay if they hit all their reps during week three and they hit their 100%, I will give them five pounds, okay? I will add five pounds to their one RM that they can use next month. So next month, they're utilizing their percentages at five, pound, five pounds more than, they did, this, than the, the, they did this month, okay? Now, if they want to go a little, if they wanna test their one RM, they wanna go 10 pounds. I've had some students that have increased their, their strength, their one RM by 20 pounds. So I'm not gonna stop them at five, but if they're feeling that, you know what, that's all I got, that's fine. I'll give you five pounds, okay? Because think about it. If you can increase your back squat by five pounds a month, that's pretty good, right? And that's kind of the hope there. And as you can see in week four, we've got uh, our dynamic effort and uh, our reps, our, our, our reps are, are less, our intensity is lower, uh, and so we really try to focus on moving the bar quickly during that time, okay? So, and like I said, it's also our deload week. <clears throat> so here's kind of an example of our day two, okay? So we got to switch, okay? So on back squat, we had our sub max, but this on, on, on our bench press, we're gonna go max effort, okay? So we're gonna start off with max effort on, on that. And then week two, we're gonna do a combination, the same thing that we did with our squat, okay? And then week three, when in the back squat we did uh, max effort, we're gonna go sub max, okay? And then week four, our deload week, let's utilize that and take advantage of that and use, uh, and use that our dynamic effort there, okay? Here is kind of an example of the rep schemes that we use. Bench press, like I said, week one, five, four, three, two, one, okay? Um, and same concept. If they hit the 100% and they're good there, then I'll give them five, five pounds for the next cycle, okay? And this is kind of the hope is to progressively overload with the percentages to get them five pounds 
each month is really what we're trying to do, okay? Uh, in week two, same thing, kind of a combo. Week four, uh, week three is our sub max, okay? So five, four, uh, a five by five, and then our D load week, dynamic, okay? So week uh, in our day three, you can see it's more of a dynamic because we our tier one exercise is more of a is more of a, a power exercise, right? So we'll go dynamic the first week and a combo of dynamic and max in the second week, and then we'll go dynamic and sub on the third week, and then we'll do the same thing for week um, week four. Okay, um, our front squat you can see tier three kind of hits a max effort in the middle, which is week two. So you can see how week one will we'll max out with bench press, week two will max out with front squat, and week three we will max out with back squat, okay? So bench press, front squat, back squat. So this way for the entire month, we're trying to get, we're trying to hit at least 100% in three lifts for that entire month. So one exercise, we're trying to hit 100% once a week, okay? The first week is bench press, the second week is front squat, and the third week is our back squat. And our fourth week, we're not doing that, we're using that as our deload, okay? So every week, we're trying to hit at least 100% on one of our lifts, on one of our lifts. So we're not maxing out on all of our lifts every week, one lift per week, is what we're trying to hit our one RM, okay? So really trying to go heavy, all right? So here's, a, here's an example, as you can see, we've got our power cleans. So we get up pretty heavy on our power cleans too, so on that second week, right? So first week bench press, we go heavy with cleans and front squat on the second week, and then go really heavy on our back squat that third week. Fourth week, deload, okay? Now, Let's talk a little bit about volume, okay? So how to determine volume. This is one of the things that I've always struggled with is like, am I working them too much? Am I not working them enough, right? So if you have not picked up the book, The System, please go out and do it. This is an amazing book. There's so much awesome stuff in there, okay? Um, so this table is something that I use and I got and I borrowed from this book. Okay, so novice, total number of reps, 750 to 1,000, okay? And you would be surprised, the majority of your high school students for the entire four years will be in this spot, okay? And they will be novices for the next four years. Very few of them will move up to the advanced, okay? Advanced, 1,200, 1, elite. Obviously, we're not even gonna touch that with our athletes, right? There's very few athletes out there that have that many years of strength training or power training to be at that level, okay? Definitely not high school students. And this is how you break it down, right? So another thing that I learned and I took from the book is just kind of break it down as what are the most important lifts for you? For us, the most important lift is the squat, okay? We will squat every day. We will do a version of a squat. We'll squat on day one, Okay. On day two, we will do a single leg squat. On day three, we will do a front squat. Okay. So we're trying, we're hitting a, a, a squat every day of the week. Okay. So three days a week, we will squat three days a week. Okay. Some people back squat three days a week. We're going to change it up a little bit. We're going to go back squat one day, uh, single leg uh, squat one day, and then we're going to front squat the next day. Okay. So we're still squatting every day. Okay. But we're not back squatting every day. All right, our pulls, our cleans and our jumps at our about 18% of our lifts, uh, our presses are about 16%, our hip hinge is about 14%. So let's use an example of 1,000 reps. If let's say we're gonna use 1,000 reps just to kind of keep it simple, okay? So this is how it breaks down. A lot of you may say, hey, the, why is the hip hinge so low? Now, one of the great thing, one of the things that we do in our program with our hip hinge is we do a lot of hamstring work, okay? We'll do uh, hamstring slides, we'll do banded good mornings, but also another thing that we do is we do a lot of jumping. We'll go weighted jumps, so, and we'll clean. Now, 
that's a lot of hip hinging, right? So when we're jumping, we're hinging at the hips. When we're doing cleans, we're hinging at the hips. So it may be, it may look like we're only doing 14% of, of hip hinge, but we're actually doing a lot more, okay? Just some of them fall into our accessory work as well, which we don't count. We don't call, count our accessory work. I'm not saying just load your kids up with tons of accessory work, um, but these are, the, these are the lifts and these are the movements that we use and that we account for, okay? So when we count for volume, these are the lifts that we count, okay? So that was, how, that was talking a little bit about volume. Now let's talk a little bit about distribution of volume by intensity zones, okay? So one of the things that I learned from Plan Strong, uh, those of you guys that know uh, Strong First, uh, Coach Powell put on an amazing clinic called Plan, Plan Strong. It was pretty intense, but I learned so much from there, okay? Uh, and they're very similar. So Plan Strong and the system are very similar uh, theories and methods. So definitely if you can't hit a Plan Strong seminar, because I, I don't think he's putting them, a lot of them on right now, but the system, the book, has a lot of similarities to that seminar that I went to, okay? But this is kind of how I break down the, the zones, all right? So in zone one, 55%, we're, 10% of our lifts are done there. In zone two, about 65%, 25% of our lifts are there. And then in zone three, 75%. This is where a big chunk of our lifts are, at about 75%, okay? Uh, 80 to 85 is zone four, around 25% of our lifts are there. And then you can see our zone five, which is 90 and above, only about 5% of our lifts are happening there, okay? And that's kind of how I distribute our intensity, all right? And let me give you an example of a lift. So this is our back squat. So I found, so one of the things that I do for all of our lifts, especially our priority lifts, is I find our average relative intensity. Not just volume, trying to find out, making sure that I'm not overworking them with volume, but also I don't want to overwork them with intensity, okay? So this is how I figure out and make sure that I'm not overworking them with intensity, okay? So I'm going to use a back squat for an example, okay? So for the back squat, we've got 73 lifts for a back squat for the entire month, okay? So that's just the back squat. Doesn't include front squat, doesn't include single leg, okay? So this is just for the back squat, 73 lifts. And I break it down into the different zones, okay? Then I split it up with how many reps, okay, in each zone, okay? And then I do the actual percentage. What is the percentage of each zone? How many lifts? So 14, so you can see zone one, 55%. I got 14% of my lifts are happening in that zone, okay? And I go all the way down, 65%, 14%. Three, three, zone three, 70%. I've got about 5% there, okay? Here's the big chunk, okay? The big chunk goes is our zone three and our zone four, okay? 75 to 80%, the majority of our lifts are happening there. And you can see in 75%, there's 21 lifts, okay? And there's 29% of our lifts are happening there, okay? Zone four, 18, 18 lifts, number of lifts, 25% of our lifts are happening there, okay? And as you can see, as the intensity goes up, the reps go down, okay? So you can see in zone four, there's only 8% of our lifts are there. Zone five, three, uh, at 90% is three, at 92.5, there's one, and at 100, there's one, okay? This is for just the back squat, okay? So now what I did is I figured out the average relative intensity for the back squat. And the way we do that is that's, we'll save that for another day, but if you do have any questions, I can find, I can, I, we can make another video on this. But for today, I want my back squat anywhere from 73 to no more than 74, just because a back squat is pretty taxing. On the other lifts, I can go up to about 75%, uh, a uh, average relative intensity. So I figured it out and I'm here for our back squat, we're at 73.66% ARI, average relative intensity. So that's pretty good. That's kind of where I want, for me, it's kind of the sweet spot for our student athletes in high school, okay? So that's kind of talking about that third phase there 
Um, a lot of information, uh, how I figure out the methods, the different uh, strength training methods that we use, the rep schemes that we use, the volume that I use, uh, and the uh, average relative intensity. What kind of intensity do I use? And that's kind of how I put that all together. This is about 11 total weeks in our entire year that we use these methods, okay? So in our next method, we'll talk in our next video. In the next video, I'll talk about preseason. Uh, but thanks for listening, and I'll talk to you soon.